Hi. Okay, hi guys. I'm back with another podcast. Um, I think the last podcast I I did at a similar time last year was Nyepi. So that's around in one week's time in Bali, the silent day. And so today is not the silent day, but maybe today is a, a more effective day to do it than the day when we're not meant to speak in Bali, which is in one week next week. Um, so again, the podcast is going to relate to identi ident identity, identifying, identification and areas like that. Um, covering it in many different ways, maybe covering areas such as nutrition, um, yeah, how basically it just interacts with us being human beings. And I'm going to start with some quotes by Bell Hooks, who died last year. So if you don't know who Bell Hooks is, feel free to Google her later or now or whenever you want. Um, it's quotes on interesting thing. Um, sometimes quotes deeply resonate with us um, and we're like, oh yeah, that feels... Um, feels like what I want to articulate. Sometimes quotes feel like um, they're not something which we agree with and then that can be quite transformational as well because then we have something to work with. Um, so the first one I'm going to start with is, let me see, so I'm going to be looking down. Um, yeah, okay, progressive holistic education. Um, is more demanding than conventional critical or feminist um, pedagogy. Um, it it emphasizes well-being. Um, so this can apply to any kind of teaching. That means that teachers must be actively involved and committed to a process of self-actualization that promotes their own well-being. Um, if you are to teach in, in a manner that empowers students. Um, and that for me resonates deeply because I definitely feel um, if I'm learning anything I want if how the person comes across who's sharing what I'm learning um, can deeply impact um, more than just the topic that they're covering. So on a deeper level, um, what other what quote should we have? Yeah, love is first and foremost exemplified by action, um, not solely by feeling. So yeah, I mentioned a lot. Um, for me, very much love is a verb. Um, it's also the intention of things. So it's not what's being done but also the intention behind being what's being done and the sort of the trying to uncover what the honesty in that um and what that's about um, mm -hmm. let me see what else can we quote for you? anyway you can you can google her i think she comes out with some very interesting things um obviously the quote is not taking the full context of what she's saying but i think a lot of what she's saying can be applied to many contexts so that's really cool um yeah one more i really find interesting i'm often struck by the dangerous narcissism fostered by spiritual rhetoric that pays so much attention to individual so self-improvement and so little to the practice of love within the context of community um so yeah i really in think that's a very powerful quote um obviously any quote that i'm saying you don't need to necessarily agree with 100 percent or but it can maybe strike um a fire or something to to reflect on in some kind of a way um yeah it's it's nice when things are done for i think personally for a purpose which is greater than just oneself um in the context of my own training if i'm handstand training it's also okay great i'm doing what i'm doing but I feel like, okay, it's going to also impact on how I can teach others. Um, so there, there always feels like it's, it's more than just me, um, which, yeah, I think definitely changes the energy in what's being done and the connection with others more than it just being about what, whatever we're doing, um, just for a small self, but for a greater sense of self, like a bigger self um, in the sense of including everyone else is, is pretty cool. Um, and I think that can be really change the energy or the, the impact of what's being done as well when that sense of we're all going to obviously individually die but there's going to probably <laughs> be more like a collective thing which keeps going on um, for how long who knows but yeah um, in the context of Instagram that's super interesting as well because um, Instagram possibly could in some contexts lack the, the sense of um, critical thinking 
um, it can be easy just to see something and go, yeah, I agree with that, <laughs> or I don't agree with that. Um, and also, yeah, when you see posts, you can just see sometimes a lot of people going, oh, yeah, 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 that, that you're you're completely right. But it's but the it context is everything. And in the context of an Instagram post, obviously all contexts, which are possible, are not covered. So whatever has said, been said, or is shared, however um, brilliant it may, may, may be in certain contexts, there will usually be one context when something doesn't apply or isn't valid. Um, so it's good to have that awareness. Um, it doesn't mean <laughs> that next time you see an Instagram post, and everyone is either saying, oh, this is rubbish or, yeah, that's true, um, that you don't necessarily need to communicate vote, um, and write on the Instagram post, well, there's this context that this doesn't apply or there's this context that it does apply. Um, but at least for yourself, you know, um, so that's that's a pretty, to keep that sense of broadness in your vision in whatever you're reading, and it could be Instagram or just life generally in conversations. Um, you may be sharing a viewpoint, but also to be aware of the the aspects or the context, maybe that it doesn't apply or it doesn't, it may be a way forward may not be the best if something happens. So to have that sense is useful um, beyond the, the world of social media. Um, yeah, I mean, if something, the someone is sharing something on Instagram and it's not a particularly substantive view and it doesn't really make that much sense, um, regardless of if a million people have said, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's, it's, I think the, the, the problem comes in when people are just validating each other's views. Um, and it's something to watch out for in oneself as well, that if you're around people who maybe have, who are just agreeing with you, so you're just both validating each other, but maybe what you're validating doesn't actually um, have sub substantive context or exploration or experience, um, yeah, it's maybe not so useful. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe better to have someone come along and just say what about this and what about this um, context or situation my arm is getting tired from holding the camera um, or the, the phone okay so this areas that could be covered in this could be anything it could be nutrition as well I mean people have shared to me that they've they've shared like their nutrition um, views obviously I know a lot of people who work in sports or yoga or where there's a uh, sometimes nutrition comes up um, and they say that they get messages from people saying that they don't agree with them. Um, I actually, f I find it surprising that they f they're surprised that <laughs> people would disagree with them because obviously in any context, it could be nutrition, um, which is deeply personal for a lot of people. Um, it could be the sports you do. It could be your political views. It could be your, your views on the whole C situation um, or the B Vax kind of situation is um, there's a lot multitude of views. Um, so whatever you share, there's probably going to be someone who has a different view <laughs> or possibly experience. Um, so I don't think personally find it surprising if people come out with maybe not agreeing with what you're sharing in these kind of things. Um, personally, I don't share so much like on social media. I don't find it so useful to to say my nutritional choices. I don't think it's going to necessarily, they're not going to be the same choices that other people necessarily would want to make or choose to make. Um, there are so many different factors in what people choose as for their nutrition. Um, some people, health is a totally important part of it. Um, for me, it is a crucial part of it as well. But there's other factors as well. Um, as human beings, we have many, many choices. And in nutrition, we have most um, human beings on this earth have many choices of what to eat. It's part of the, the joy of being a human. Um, many animals don't have that, that, same, <laughs> that same choice. Um, so factors that can include for nutritional requirements. Um, ethics can come into what people choose to eat. Um, consideration of the, the, the source and supply, chain of the food. For some people, they consider this stuff. So for some, they don't. Um, so if someone's sharing a picture of, I don't know, meat, which is maybe not being considered about that those factors um i mean there could be meat where that was considered but it's possible that someone else is eating meat that that isn't considered you know some people may react and go blah 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 um religion has obviously an impact um location where present obviously for some people oh thank you um some people can source certain foods like if you live in alaska it's going to be hard to source certain foods but maybe that's a lot of fish um, and somewhere else, if you're living in the middle of the, the desert, maybe a different kind of vegetable will be your more, more available to you. 
um, our family, our friendships, these can also impact our food choices and what other people are doing around us. Um, the weather affects our food choices, so the crops get obviously affected by the weather where we live um, and whether we exercise, so what we need to supply ourselves with to exercise effectively, etc, etc. There's so many more. Um, so it's, yeah, there's so many factors that obviously will, will impact how people will respond to anyone sharing anything about food. Some people will just go, oh yeah, that looks like a great dish and others will go, uh. But yeah, I wouldn't really take these things personally because everyone has a whole different baggage of factors that they're taking into consideration, um, whether thought about or not. And that applies to a lot of things beyond food. So yeah, um, I mean, sharing a piece, um, a dish and saying that this is working for me, let's say I, I share like a vegan dish or I share just a carnivore dish, both the same, um, but just different. Um, but the sharing of a picture is the, the same bit. Um, it, it can be a little bit like me saying that one is the best, um, but obviously someone else will have completely different factors to consider. So it will be a bit like me saying that my me doing yoga is the best kind of movement. Maybe someone else thinks football is the best. Someone else says muscle ups. Um, someone else has a different approach to sleep, um, but they can't really tell everyone else that the approach to sleep is the most effective because maybe someone is living in a place with 20, 20 hours of darkness a day, someone else with 20 hours of lightness, someone else does a lot of exercise, they need their body to rest. So yeah, we all have obviously different factors. Um, so yeah, I think the, the fun thing that we can all do is to stay curious um, for ourselves, for others. Um, and yeah, so there are a lot of strong factions around. Um, I've just touched Food is obviously one that I wanted to touch on because we all, I think, eat. <laughs> um, some of us don't actively get involved in politics, um, which is still, in a sense, a choice in, in itself. Um, so in American politics, there's obviously the, the R the, or the D that people vote for predominantly. In food, there's the C world, carnival world, there's the vegan world. But there's obviously so much more um, in these worlds. Um, in, injection world, yeah, there's obviously different um, views there. Um, so there's a whole array of nuances which are possible within all these contexts, which I haven't mentioned, um, and many people who just don't define themselves in one of these kind of factions. So yeah, it, personally I find it's pretty cool to be open to the possibility um, of being th there being something that's not known yet. Um, yeah, solidarity, yes, um, very much so. Um, so if you have an identification with this and that, um, even in the world of nuances, maybe open to the possibility of there being something something else. Um, if I see sometimes an Instagram post or something, I'm like, what, is, what are they saying? I sometimes think back to maybe what I shared <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, maybe it's like, yeah, maybe it's similar to what I would have shared 10 years ago, possibly, possibly not, but, um, but like a different version of ourselves. So we're all obviously then open to the possibility or we are all constantly changing um some more consciously than others or aware of it but what is um i think this is going to be quite a long chit chat so i really enjoy like seeing what you guys are contributing to what i'm ch chatting about um so solidarity very much because i think it's also relates to this idea of changing that we're all changing um or you have the ability to change so then the the so then you can see the, the solidarity in whatever someone's different choices are to you. Um, and then you don't necessarily want to put your choices on someone else. But then having said that, it's there has been one thread. So obviously looking, you can reflect and look back at different versions of yourself and see how you change and maybe how other people could be in a sense different versions of you as well. Um, but yeah, there can be sometimes threads which pop up, which is... So like a, we can have a character development in, of a film that we watch. We can also maybe, there can be a thread within the film which can stay a bit constant. Um, yeah, I mean, recently it just clicked to me that a thread has been, for me, it's super important and it's always been there, regardless of how I shapeshift or what I'm doing in different ways, is um, honesty or ethics in some kind of way. Um, I remember at school, we went on a school trip once and there was a, the opportunity to go water skiing, but I think school only had money for a certain amount of people in the group to go water skiing. 
Um, so one of the people running the group said, okay, it's just going to be all the boys who go water skiing. And um, yeah, the girls won't won't do water skiing. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, that's that's not me. <laughs> Ethically, <laughs> or that feels really unfair in some kind of a way. So I remember mentioning this to the person who made this strange decision. And he wasn't very impressed. And he just basically said that that's the way it is. Um, and then I remember contacting the, the headmaster of the school, so I, who wasn't around, but I, I called or I, him. And then he listened very carefully, which I, I really appreciate back then because I was very, very small. And um, he then contacted this teacher and then we ended up doing it from a like drawing straws kind of way. So it ended up being a mixture of girls and boys who went or skiing. Some people went, some people didn't. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so there can be like threads. So I, that thread of like what feels fair and what doesn't feel fair has like come up a little bit throughout my life, which has been pretty interesting. Um, in different environments, if something doesn't feel fair, that feels or feel right. Sometimes that tick ticks over a little bit more than what we're doing in the environment just to address that before then getting back to things. But then I notice with some people, they're like, okay, I'm happy just to do, go to a gym, do muscle ups. Um, and it doesn't matter if something is not fair or not, I'll just go and do my thing. But yeah, it's nice to be connected with a sense, for me personally, of something greater than just oneself in an environment. Um, I often think if I have a child, um, which I don't at the moment, like I haven't physically birthed a child, but maybe in the future I will, but even if I don't, um, as a mum to a boy or a girl, if there's something which doesn't feel fair, it's important for me to address that for the future child. <laughs> or if you, which may literally be mine or, or someone else's, um, so that they're in an environment where they feel supported, um, which really gets back to, so really do look at Bell Hook's quotes, because she's got brilliant quotes on love, um, education, so B-E-L-L -L Hooks, H-O-O-K-S. Um, she died last year, as I mentioned before, um, but her work um, continues, and the way she can impact minds and affect minds um, does continue. And yeah, so yeah, that's, uh, for some reason I wrote children is the future, uh, you're, you're saying children is the future, <laughs> yeah. um, that's, it, that's it, and I think if we have an idea that even if we're not having children ourselves, that what we're doing impacts children, um, we speak up for more than ourselves, um, I think it's easy sometimes for people not to speak up when things are not completely right, um, because they just have this vision of what they want to do but if you feel like okay it's going to impact imagine your child being in this environment and maybe younger and maybe more vulnerable then it's important to communicate i wrote for some reason don't be a gym wanker <laughs> because i mean maybe it connects but yeah don't 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 be someone i think that what's a gym wanker um it's maybe someone who just is just like focused on their muscle gains or the the pull-ups but just not aware of the environment around them um so and um, the Im impact that can have in people beyond um beyond just working out um so yeah we're all always exploring we're always changing shape-shifting um yeah and so that comes back to your previous you have previous incarnations um i get a bit sad when people are not um they're very dismissive of their previous incarnations because it obviously is what brings them to be how they are now um and yeah so there's and those are some things are going to remain so just to be aware of that um yeah okay so a kind of devotion um can be to this moment and to us just seeing how that's affecting your how you think you were before um yeah just relating to to exercise and nutrition as well um maybe just at the moment this moment just be aware of what what elements you feel like in your experience right now so maybe you feel quite earthed maybe you're sitting maybe you're standing maybe you feel quite um fluid in the experience maybe of watching this or just being in the environment you're in um maybe you feel quite airy um so there might be just be aware of the elements um that you bring to to watching something or to communicating to interacting um to sharing with others um so you know what you're bringing to the table and that's that's quite a strong ethics as well, is just to be aware of, of what you're bringing. Um, the more, if an environment doesn't feel completely clear, I feel it's even more important to understand what you're, you're bringing um, so that you can, you know it's not, you, not um, that you're clear in yourself, um, so it's not the environment which is giving you sort of a false idea of, um, sort of maybe what's going on. 
Um, so yeah, that's how are you guys feeling? Are you earthed? Are you airy? Or are you is that a strange idea to you? The concept of having a sense of an element in your presence. Um, getting back to the sense of environments, yes, okay, so in within the context of environments, so, so if I'm sitting in my room now, I've got nature around me outside, um, but I'm still aware of, so maybe the evenness of my sit bones on as I'm sitting, um, where I feel heat, where I feel less areas, I feel coolness, <laughs> because I'm in Indonesia, which is pretty hot, but yeah, I'm aware of these sensations, so I'm not giving just all my attention to a screen right now, or or to the whole room around me. Um, oh, thank you. That's very nice. Um, I really like what you're, you're bringing. Um, I have this energy my new day. Okay, so environment, we're in an environment now, we're on Instagram, but also there's obviously the environments we're all in separately in our, our various rooms or places or outside, wherever you may be. And environments can also be like people. So we're aware of, as people, what we're doing, but maybe we're also aware of the environment because it is a bigger physical expression of us, in a sense. Um, so environment itself can have strong talents and traits. But like us, <laughs> it can have the talents and traits which need more work. So let's say you're in a very polluted city, be aware of that. So you know, okay, I need to maybe make the effort to, in other ways, to be more... Um, less polluted so maybe you're 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 not just you're eating more less polluted food or or the or breathing exercise or something to 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 help create balance but they the tra the talents and traits can be your workplace any places you go cafes you go to maybe it's busy then maybe you need to get a sense of quietness within you so to 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 be aware of this kind of stuff just makes life i think very interesting um yeah, so can you see the traits in the environments you frequent? Um, maybe the one you're in now, what kind of factors does it have? Um, sometimes when we have a bit of a distance from an environment, we realize more clearly as well. It can be easy to sort of be so immersed in something that it's only like looking at a video personally of me handstanding that I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm not pointing that big toe on that one foot. But I'm so immersed in the experience of the handstand when I'm doing it that I'm, it's difficult to see. But then being, taking a step out is like, aha. <laughs> you know, like I changed gyms recently and I'm like, oh my God, this new gym is just so clear. <laughs> there's no drama. It's, there's lots of space. Um, a lot more people are super focused. Um, there's a lot more, less chit chat. There's no, like the people who work there are super cool. Um, it's like, a, you know, and then you like compare. Um, and a comparison is not a bad thing. <laughs> and I think there's some quotes saying, com like, comparison is the thief of joy, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not. It's super useful. Um, if I have a workshop, I can say to someone, okay, these two handstands, they both have the same shoulder mobility, but they're doing slightly different. Why? Like, is it a different engagement that's going on, maybe in the glutes or something that is creating a different shape because their shoulder mobility is the same? So the comparison can really show what's not, why certain things are not so great um, and why certain things are for some other things. Um, and then we hopefully have a vision that people can always change, but also environments can change. So we hope um, <laughs> the, um, the, the change, we, we hope that things can be different for different things. Um, if there are undesirable traits of an environment, are you picking them up? So some people who I know work in offices and things like um, certain offices around, some of them, not all of them, but some of them find them quite stressful. Um, so they, it's, and certain traits of that environment, you know, maybe the people are quite cold, they don't speak to each other. So maybe that trait can go into their personal life or when they're out of the office. So it's really useful if you're in an environment, notice the traits and go, are you picking up on certain traits? Um, and that, you know, if you don't want to wait just till we go on a holiday to realize, oh, suddenly I'm free of that, <laughs> you know? Well, sometimes people say that someone dies and suddenly they feel a bit free um, because they were making them, affected them in some way. Can you be like, just observe and then that will give you maybe the, the possibility of more freedom now. Um, is it possible to be independent of the environments in certain ways? Um, so for example, coming back to food, if you are at McDonald's, is it possible to eat nutritiously in some way um, or not eat and wait to, <laughs> to eat somewhere else? 
maybe, um, maybe not. How can you thrive wherever you are, basically, is what I'm asking. Um, is it possible? Some environments may support it more, but if you're in an environment which doesn't, then can you still thrive? <laughs> How can you go in the direction of thriving? Um, um, yeah, so what are the qualities of your awareness? Um, can you give yourself the space to, to know, um, to, to realize kind of these things? Um, what do I hear? Difference between vulnerability and manipulation and dumping. Oh, okay, that's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> this is quite a long chat. I probably um, won't do another <laughs> chat for a while because this is so long. Feel free to leave this chat and then you can come back and watch it. I'll post it on Instagram if you need to go somewhere. Um, my name is Katie. It's my Instagram handle. And that's my name, I'm Katie, C-A-T-I-E. But my books, I wrote two books. Um, that's under Catherine which no one really calls me that name apart from my mum. So what I was saying about the, the vulnerability part of it, um, yes, we want to be open, but we also, um, yeah, it's someone was like, I've got a few girlfriends and they've been, te- they have told, not all my girlfriends, but some of them have t- said they've been in relationships in the past, sexual relationships, where the, the guys they found were sort of exhibited um, manipulation and gaslighting behaviours um katie yeah um i've never been in a relationship with someone like that who's who exhibits these behaviors um as a their constant thing at all um thank god um but it, i have seen these behaviors in people um and it's it's very interesting so this is a very interesting for me topic um just how different people can behave um gaslighting for those who are not used to the term is when someone tries to to tell someone else how their behavior is by but manipulate it so it comes across as um like change gives them a, like a different impression and a not in a in a good way of their behavior um now i read something recently that a guy wrote and i was like oh my god that's um to some that was this is like they're trying to change um like a perspective of something and i thought okay this is what gaslighting is i personally found it hilarious because I had space to to see, but I was thinking if someone's in a sexual relationship with someone like that, it's very hard to have the space. Um, So that will come again. So that relates to being in environments. It's hard sometimes if you're in the environment to have the space to see um, and not be emotionally affected in some way and to just find it hilarious um, or like, oh, this doesn't or just find something stupid because you're in it. Um, so yeah, yoga, handstands, meditation can be things which help, but yeah, it it is more difficult definitely. Um, if you're in something in an environment to give, to get that space sometimes, but yeah, no things change. Um, observation, just observing can be super powerful in itself. That can change things. Um, okay. So, okay. Coming to coaching because coaching is then how do you get coached or to maybe to have space or what is a good coach? Um, I get asked a lot. Um, I'm not always in certain countries where people are messaging me. Sometimes they, they want to go to a group class. Um, I can share. It's like my, the, what I was saying about nutrition. I can share what I feel is a good coach in my opinion and experience, but like nutrition, someone else may like something else. Um, so that's what I will, I will still share what I feel is expert coaching or good coaching um and but i'd also show something to look out for i look out for people just with like the gift of the gab um i'm half irish um and yeah there's like in the pub talk there's a huge amount of gift of the gab but it doesn't necessarily change change things like in that pub debate um so just because someone talks a good talk yeah it doesn't necessarily mean they're a good coach um, I would look for people personally who devote themselves to the topic that you want to learn um, and are constantly learning, exploring. So it is relates to everything I've mentioned, which this is a really long <laughs> chat, but it's all relates to the same thing. So it's identity. So someone who's open to learning, exploring, because then they're open to change themselves. And then hopefully they're happy with you guys, you know, changing and being with you for the journey and or different parts of you. Thank you. That's very nice to hear. Um, so yeah, they can people can learn and explore many ways. Um, and also, if they're interested in different topics as one, well, always learning different topics to the one they're sharing with you, that's cool as well. Um, personally, I find it really interesting how different topics 
um, cross contaminate or cross feed and <laughs> not contaminate the other ones. If I'm learning surfing for like more than one year now, how it affects how I teach handstands or how it affects my other yoga and how it also strengthens them in different ways physically and also just in the mental process of learning. Um, yeah, also I'd look for co coaches that don't lecture but enter a dialogue with you. Um, in the beginning, for sure, you may be new to a topic, so you may not have much to share in a dialogue, maybe, but you have your experience, which is super valid. Look for people who validate your experience. Um, but yeah, you want your experiences and insights to be valued. You are valuable. <laughs> Whatever you're learning, you're valuable. Your experience is a gift and you're learning that you'll want to be learning. Okay, thank you. And um, that's very nice. Yeah, I know I, this is a long one. Um, <laughs> so this, if anyone stays for the whole time, I'm really like, wow. Um, but hopefully bits of it may be useful to dip into and back at times. Um, so just to come back to it, like the coaching thing, coaching is for you, not the coach. Um, so it's, it, this is important. So coaching is for you. I'll repeat that, not the coach. So yeah, have people who will enter dialogue with you. Um, that's important. Um, do you feel comfortable with the coach is important in whatever it is. Um, the more you stay with that person, the more that becomes more important if you see someone once a month yeah maybe you don't need to be so comfortable with them at, if you go into more intimacy in the topic with them whatever that topic may be um it becomes more and more heightened um because coaches who are sensitive and perceptive um with emotional intelligence and depth really affect how you're gonna progress in the topic and how it will transform you because it's obviously more than just a topic that you're you're doing you're changing yourself by learning something new um, yeah, so personally, yeah, for longer term, a coach who sees beyond the topic and wants to leave the world a better place, <laughs> and this is maybe a little bit, uh, hopefully it doesn't sound idealistic, but I hope that this is some part of coaching, um, is crucial. Um, so they're coaching with, because that gives them also a sense of coaching with more than themselves in mind. I mean, if, if you, someone has the sense that they're not going to be around forever, then hopefully that really transforms the, the legacy which they're, they're leaving the way they want to help. Um, so, because it has to be personally coaching about more than oneself and death just presents that straight away, um, that, you know, something will continue beyond us. Um, such as the bell hooks quotes <laughs> that I, I shared earlier on. Um, Okay, and the ability to switch is something specific uh, as well. And that's a particular, that's more than just a general aspect of the coach. Um, so for example, in handstand training, sometimes with people I focus on form, um, it can occasionally with some people become too much of a, like a mental preoccupation that they just want to get the straight line. Maybe their shoulders are super tight. So that journey for the mobility in the shoulders will take a while. But so at some, if they're just focusing on form, it can really train, maybe not be the most useful thing in the aspect of the training. So the whole, t some, yes, of course we need to focus on it sometimes, but sometimes we have to switch. Um, and then we can play with just feeling the balancing. Maybe their form is a bit, yeah, it's a bit banana -y, but it's the only, it's the straightest banana they can be in the context of their shoulders. They can enjoy the pleasure, the joy of balancing, building strength, building subtlety, subtleties or feeling their hands, um, taking their weight and different aspects of the fingers, sides of the hand, um, like we can do with our feet, standing or walking or running or surfing or whatever sports you play with your feet. Um, so yeah, the ability to switch, to change focuses. Um, and that also plays back into identity. So it relates to identity that if you can s switch your, um, the ability, the space to switch placed into different roles we can play um, different ways of being and the ability that we can change we can die up in some aspects of our being to be anew in others um and that's what happens in in learning stuff um we are put in the beginning just doing a plank for 30 seconds is maybe super impressive and we want to validate that um for people we work with and tell them because it's a it can be the challenge but then later walking the feet up the wall may be the challenge the plank is good as a warm-up but it's not going to be the one we're saying oh wow you you pushed your boundaries today so it will change as their identity changes in relationship to the topic and just generally as well um 
Okay, what did I hear? Watch out for support based on someone else's validation of themselves. Yeah, I think that comes a bit full circle to the beginning. Um, yeah, so but I just, I think wrote it in a different context. I declare I'm plant-based, I'm much happier and healthier, causing less harm to the planet. And yeah, look at me, um, don't I look healthy? But um, fellow plant-based people send me basically saying, oh, thank you, yeah, yeah I agree with that. Um, but the, yeah, you can substitute what I just said about plant-based to carnival, so it can really be anything. So people are, who are just doing the same thing as you basically just validate what you're doing, which yeah, it's um, there's other ways to what, whatever you're doing in whatever context, obviously, which we t touched on before. And to learn, maybe we we just see what the other ways as well. We don't necessarily need to change the other ways, but just yeah, be open to the fact that they can work for them for other people. Um, yeah, and also just. Just be aware of people just telling you you're amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's maybe not always the, the most useful way for growth. Um, and it's sometimes a bit weird. Um, we can also, like, the food aspect, obviously, as I mentioned before, can can be changed to yoga, cafe, your favourite cafe, political, really, just you. Oh, cool. I, I would like to hear a song. Um, so, yeah, explore honestly. Go deeper. Go Try to go deeper than your identities or identifications. Um so yeah, you're, you're connected to everything. Um, so you can still have your, your preferences and do what you do. Nothing needs to change in that aspect if you don't want it to, but yeah, try to have, be more as well in, in some aspect. Um, okay, uh, ah, okay, so working, this is going back to training with someone. Um, working with someone, we can look at an exercise done um, after they've done the exercise. So this will relate more to people who train people or who want to do some kind of physical training um, we can look at it obviously post the event um, and see how it felt for them is one aspect of like how we we help them grow. Um, that's some feedback. Um, I, we can work as a coach um, on what we see in the other person and we can also do video footage which will maybe show us stuff we didn't even see um, in some aspects. Um, so that's so when we're looking at the form, we can look at structure form, but also be aware of when you're coaching someone, the environmental factors. So I'm sort of bringing in factors I've covered in different areas. So the let's say there's a fire alarm going off next door when, you know, I'm going to use come back to a handstand or an arm balance. Um, they stay in that balance during that fire alarm. Yet that's going to be a different environmental factor than no fire alarm. And I, that's a really obvious environmental factor, but obviously the floor, the environment, who's around, these factors will influence. So yeah, that's uh, be aware of these factors when you're training someone, coaching someone. Um, we're not independent of our environments. Um, we can try to have space to be our best and the same, similar skills in any environment, but just notice what's going on. Um, oh, so in a handstand, I can give them external pressure. I can try and push them over. They're super balanced or dog <laughs> can come up maybe they hold the balance maybe that's and the dog is around their hands so maybe that's more impressive than the time they did it without the dog around um also as coaches yeah i think it's super important for ourselves as we're coaching but for them look at their breathing their mental and their emotional experiences in what they're doing so who really cares if someone gets a one arm chin up but the emotionally you know they leave the the experience and they're in a very crazy mental state of mind and then the whole life is very affected after that you know but can we look at that and can we see what what we're, work, we're working with holistic people um we're not just working trying to hopefully create like a, a physical achievements which look amazing um <laughs> that may happen but yeah there's the whole package to consider um Okay, and also we don't, when we evaluate, we don't, tr I think it's, or try, we try not to just like, well, we don't, um, I don't personally go, okay, you did a 20 second handstand today, wow, <laughs> you're, you're, well, you're, you're victor, like it could be their new record, so there's a context for that, but like if they're used to doing one minute and they did 20 seconds, we don't really want to like, it's not going to emotionally maybe help them to go, okay, you're victim, you only hold it for 20 <laughs> seconds or, of the situation or, you know, but we observe what happened. Um, so that's something. So it's like, this relates to any experience, really. Um, let's say a guy friend is telling me about his mug, he got mugged, um, and he's telling me the facts. Um, so we'll, we, I think it's really useful in any coaching, look at the facts. So he's telling me he got mugged, but I'm not personally trying to put him in a role. Oh, you're a victim, you got mugged. Um, or 
you know, that I don't know the full story yet. Um, he's not putting himself in that role, but he's telling me what happened. Um, so it's easy for a third party or a coach to, to put a role on someone. I think we have to be aware that we're not doing that um, for them and for us. Um, and also what's good and bad is not always so obvious. Um, so let's say someone's used to doing a one minute handstand, they do 20 seconds. Maybe they learned something from that. Like, oh, I did this and that's why it was 20 seconds. They learned something from the experience. Um, the friend who got mugged, maybe, yeah, he's $300 out of pocket. But um, he didn't drop it on horse gambling, which maybe it was going to go on horse gambling instead. Or maybe the mugger uses, uses it to feed his children. Or it prompts him to invest in crypto the next day and suddenly he earns a lot more. Or he goes to the police station in Indonesia to report the mugging and he meets his future wife. So, you know, like things are not always so clear. So whether something's good or bad. So, yeah, just to put people in roles of what's happened to them or ourselves is maybe not the best thing. Which comes back to identity, the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, where attention goes. Um, yeah, so look where attention goes. Um, it, it's easy if we, like, also when you're coaching someone to to put the... If they're coming to you injured, it's sometimes easy for them to... Or yourself, maybe. Um, easy to put all the attention on the injury. So, obviously, we need to have an awareness of that injury so that we don't hurt it further. But... We still want to be aware of everything else. Um, so maybe the, the knee is slightly um, wobbly, but let's put attention on our feet as well, our glutes, so the, that we're not hurting our back. We don't injure something else. Um, it's like if we did have children, if maybe you do, um, maybe you have three kids, <laughs> three, um, <laughs> maybe one of them is super loud, you know, the others are more quiet. You don't want to just forget the other two kids. I've got to be careful which way my fingers are being held here. But the, yeah, so just because one is louder, it doesn't mean we forget the other two. So the same when we're coaching, working with people's bodies. Um, and you share them some people may be threatened by that and some people may deeply resonate with that um but then also we have to play that come back to that whole being careful that it's not um we're not people the people who are resonating with it yeah are they just that validating ourselves and our own identity so just to have spacious around that so it's like a yes it's good that what we when we sincerely deeply enough what we want to do or feel about certain things our ethics some people will deeply resonate um so that's different to someone just agreeing with you um 
so yeah so that's important um but and it, sometimes there's a fine line um and also yeah sometimes there's more love coming back to love as the verb which is by hick um bell bell hawks if you look up her her work again you'll see she writes a lot about love um being the transforming agent even in the civil rights movement she said that was the main why it was so powerful it was all about love um and the civil rights movement is seeing what's not right um so there can be great love in articulating in seeing what doesn't feel right it doesn't mean you don't think the other person is in that role or is doing that behaviors forever but it's to be that's more love sometimes than pretending that someone is doing something different um so if you can yeah that's important um what do you prioritize in your life um that's important da, 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 da. Um, okay, and then I'm just gonna yeah say I think three more lines and then <laughs> and then I'm off <laughs> and this is, um, for a long time. So in this chit chat thing, but anyway, so if some and then I'll see you for handstands maybe. <laughs> okay, so if someone like gives you your food every day, um, so this is coming back to the ethics, the identities that um, this has pretty much been about, um, and it comes back to nutrition, <laughs> which I've touched on as well, and coaching. Um, and the food basically could be coaching or it could be food or it could be something else. Um, substitute it for what you want. Do you have the strength to question their behavior when they do something unethical? Um, so it can be easy to call someone or something out that isn't intimately or in some way bound with your lifestyle. Um, but to call something out when it can change your, your life um, is very different. So I can look at the situation in Russia and Ukraine and have my view on that, that's not fair, that's not that. But um, it's very different for people living there or in in the thing. Um, we still obviously want to do what we can in situations which we're not involved in for other people. But it's been also threatens um, maybe your job, maybe your money, maybe where you go, maybe your cafe you go to. Um, to call out the cafe that they're not cleaning the counters, you know, maybe they say, don't come back, <laughs> you, know, you know, it's, um, but you're like, but you could be creating disease for other people, you know, so you, you there could be, it could threaten your, your pattern of life um, to be ethical, um, ooh. so, so yes, um, hopefully, I say things when I, I feel like it's more than useful for just me, um, if something doesn't really feel right, if it's if I feel like it's more than useful just for like me, like if they, I get the wrong food in a restaurant, like they they do the order wrong, I don't really care so much if they don't change it. I may say I did order this, but if they don't change it, it doesn't really impact more than me. Not really. So unless it's they're gonna give me some like meat or something, which I don't, anyway. <laughs> so I won't go into my own nutritional choices. But you know, if but unless it, so ethically it would affect me. But like if, if they just give me like a different kind of bean <laughs> you know instead of chicken peas they gave me kidney beans because i read my order wrong you know is it yeah i'll still say i ordered this but do i really care if they change it no not really because it, there's something not really just impacting more than me um so the two hope can often correlate um as well though so what impacts you will impact other people um so if you feel for you something doesn't feel fair or ethically correct it will impact other people um a lot of the time this is why it's important to communicate and, and say, you know, it's not about like, you know, just getting involved, but just like maybe saying, like, you know, he is doing something, um, you know, like in the context of like, he's doing this and, you know, maybe another girl comes along and it's not, you know, they're not, they, they don't just laugh it off. So it's a situation which should maybe just be noted that this is not a, co a good situation. Or it could be any situation. You go to a food and there's food poisoning. You tell them so that other people don't get food poisoned. Um, so that's important. Um, yeah, so maybe I will see some of you, just to get back to the fact that you have previous incar um, incarnations of yourself. Um, I always get, coming back to the sense that I feel it's a bit weird when people say they don't like those versions. There's going to be other people who are versions of old yous around so maybe you do like some versions of yourself because yeah you're going to meet them as well maybe and other people um so that will and then you can see that they would develop maybe into you now so it's um i find these things a bit peculiar 
Anyway, so anyway, back back to hands-on training. I do teach online, so you can let me know. Um, I do teach one-to-ones online, and if some groups that get together, maybe they partner with someone somewhere else. I'm teaching a retreat in June in Greece with Arisea, um the 3rd to the 10th of June. We have three spaces left. If you want to, it's a, it's not a philosophy <laughs> um, week. It is a, um, a yoga, which does involve it, a little bit of philosophy, but yeah. Um, and handstand training and mobility training and breath work. Um, if you want information on that, just yeah, send me a message. Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, I will be in London in May. It's my one European trip. I'm going away from Indonesia for like five weeks. So yeah, if you want one-to-ones in that time, I am available. Um, there will be a workshop in London at that time as well. So you can message me about that. If anyone stayed for the whole of this talking thing, <laughs> well done. It seemed to, I think, go on a long time. Hopefully something is useful. You can refer back to it. Um, yeah, it covered quite a lot. Um, so yes, enjoy. Have a great day wherever you are. Nice to see lots of you faces that I know popping up, names and um um probably telling me to do something else now so yes wishing you all a great day for wherever you are in the world it's um evening for me um different times for you guys okay hope to chat with you another time feel free to dm me about the, the retreat